In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your very own interactive quiz using Adobe InDesign. Follow along and learn how to create clickable buttons, apply interactivity using the Buttons and Forms panel, and explore how to export your quiz either as an interactive PDF or through Publish Online. Whether you're a teacher, designer, or just looking to add engaging elements to your layouts, this one's for you. So let's jump in and get started. On my screen, I have a document with three pages sized for mobile device. On page one, I have my first questions with four multiple choice options. If I open up my layers panel, you can see that I have three layers altogether. Questions, which has all the question options on the page, followed by answers, which has the answers with the correct answer in green. And then everything else is on this content layer. So if I turn everything back on, we'll start with the questions layer first. I'll zoom into the first set of options here. And the first question is, what is the capital of Australia? Now let's go ahead and convert all four multiple choice objects to buttons. For this, we'll need the buttons and forms panel. I already have mine docked here, and I'm just going to tear it off and place it closer to the area that I'm working on. If you don't have buttons and forms, of course, you can find it under window, interactive, and then choose buttons and forms. Now, as mentioned, I'd like to convert all four of these options into buttons. So I'm gonna click the first, and while holding shift, I'll click the other three. I'm gonna make my way up to the type dropdown and choose button. I've converted all four of those objects into buttons. I'm gonna click on the first option here, which is Sydney, and I'll rename this Sydney question. I'll click on the second option and you can see it's called button two, but we're going to rename all of these buttons. This one will be Canberra question. I'll click on the third, that's Melbourne, and this will be Melbourne question. And finally, I'll click on Brisbane and do the same thing. This is Brisbane question. So I'll go back to my layers panel and turn off the questions layer. So now I can access the answers layer. I'll start with the Sydney button I'll click on it first, and while holding shift, I'll click on the other three. I'll go back to my buttons and forms panel and convert that selection into a button. Now all four of these are buttons. I'll click away and then click Sydney, and you can see now this one's called button five. Instead of questions, these will be called answers. So I'll rename this one Sydney answer. And we'll do the same thing for the second. We'll call this one Canberra answer. I'll click on the third, and we'll call this button Melbourne Answer. And finally, I'll click the last one, and this is Brisbane Answer. Now, one other important step before moving on is you want to have these hidden until they're triggered. In other words, we don't want them to appear until we click the question button to trigger the answer button. So again, I'll click on Sydney, hold shift, and click the other three. And in the buttons and forms panel, check hidden until triggered. Ensure that that is on. Great, now we can make our way back to the questions layer and turn that back on. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to start adding the interactivity to these buttons. Let's start with Sydney. I'll click on that and we've already renamed it. The event will be on release or tap, which means that it will be accessible on desktop or mobile device. And now we wanna add our action. So I'll click the plus icon to add an action. And in this case, we want show hide buttons and forms. Now in this case, when I click on the Sydney question button, I want to hide that button. So in the visibility section next to Sydney question, set the visibility to hidden. That's the eyeball with the slash through it. Now I also want it to show the Sydney answer. So if I scroll down just a bit, you could see it here, Sydney answer and I will turn that on to show. So to recap, when I click the Sydney question button, it'll be hidden and the Sydney answer button will be shown. Let's do the same thing for the other buttons. I'll click Canberra, go under actions, show hide buttons and forms. I'll scroll back up. And in this case, Canberra, I wanna hide it when it's clicked. And if I scroll down, I wanna show the answer when the question button is clicked. I'll click on Melbourne, 
under actions, show hide buttons and forms. And in this case, I wanna hide the Melbourne question button and I want to show the Melbourne answer button. We have one more to do here. I'll click Brisbane. Under actions, show hide buttons and forms. And you can see Brisbane question. When I click it, I wanna hide it and I wanna show the answer. Now, of course, we can test this out. If I click my EPUB preview window here, which is docked on the right-hand side of my screen, and I'll just extend it to increase the size a little bit, and I'll press play to refresh the EPUB interactivity window, and now we can test out these buttons. So I'll click Sydney, I'll click Canberra, that's the correct answer, Melbourne and Brisbane. You notice down below I have a reset button. So let's just say the viewer chooses the wrong answer and wants to try again. We can make a button here called reset to reset all the answers. So if I scroll down here, you can see I have the reset text frame. And again, I'll just convert that into a button and I'll rename this button reset one. The action here will be the same. So it's show hide buttons and forms. And when we click that reset button, we want to show all the questions. So I'll show Sydney question, show Canberra, show Melbourne, and show Brisbane. And I want to hide Sydney, hide Canberra, hide Melbourne, and finally hide Brisbane. Anything marked with an X will be ignored. Now because this is the reset button, we don't need to add an action to it. So we'll just leave it on X to ignore it. Now if I open my EPUB preview window again and press play to refresh this page, now we could test this out. So let's just say I select Sydney and I got the answer wrong. Now I can click reset to reset the quiz and possibly choose the correct answer. Now that we created the first set of multiple choice questions and answers, let me show you how to duplicate them and add them on the next page. Now the great thing about interactive buttons in Adobe InDesign is that you don't have to recreate them from scratch. Because you've done the heavy lifting already, we can simply copy and paste them to another page and rename the buttons in the Buttons and Forms window. For example, I can select all of these buttons as well as the Reset button, and while holding Option on a Mac, that would be Alt on Windows, simply drag another copy to the second page in the layout. Now there's still some work to do, you can see that the content is still referring to the first question in the quiz. So we'll update the questions and answers on this second page. So I'll just double click in them. And this question is, what is the currency of Japan? Option one will be ring it. Option two will be won. Option three will also be won, but spelt with a Y. And option D will be the correct answer, yen. Now if I click on the selection tool, click away, and then go to my layers panel and temporarily hide the questions layer to access the answers, I'll just repeat the naming convention here. So I'll double click the first, and this is ring it. The second is won. The third is won, but with a Y. And the last option is the correct one, yen. So in this case, we just have to swap out the color for the correct answer. I'll click the direct selection tool, that's the white arrow, and click on the shape in the correct answer and go to my swatches panel and choose this green that's available here in the swatches panel. And I'll also select the text and make it the dark blue. I'll click on the selection tool again Click on the shape on the second answer in this question. Now because this is not the correct answer, we're going to make this the blue color and just change the text from the blue to white. So if I click away, now if I go back to my layers panel and turn questions back on, those should match. So there's the questions and there are the answers. Questions, answers. Perfect, now that that's set up, we're going to have to rename all the buttons. So I'll start with the first one, ring it. What happens is when you create another button or a copy of a button, it just keeps the naming convention and adds the number one to it. So because I copied Sydney question, now this is Sydney question one. However, we want to change that to ring it question. 
And we're gonna do that for all of them. So we'll choose one, and this will be one question. And you're getting the concept now. And when you're doing this, by the way, it's automatically updating in the visibility. So this is one with a Y question. And it's really important to take your time as you're doing this because one simple mistake could throw off the entire interactivity. So this is Yen question. Good, now I'm gonna go back to my layers panel and turn off layers temporarily. And we're gonna do the same thing here. This is ring it answer. And this is one answer. That's good. And this is one with a Y answer. And the last one, the correct answer is Yen answer. Good. I know that takes a little bit of time, but at least all the interactivity will not change. So you don't have to reapply the visibility settings that we did in the first example. Now, if I scroll down here, we forgot to bring over the reset button. So I'm going to, again, hold option and drag this. So it's centered to my page there. And because it's, that is the purple color of the background, I'll just change that from purple to white. I'll click the button and you can see in the buttons and forms window, it's already renamed reset to. So we can go ahead and actually test out this example as well. So if I go back to my EPUB preview window and press play to refresh the document inside the window, I can make my way to page two in this document. And first let's test out the buttons. Ring it, one, one, yen. Good, I'll reset it. And now I could just choose the right answer. So that one is working as well. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the document by adding the third set of questions and answers. And then I'll show you how to export this as a PDF or publish it online. I finished the interactive buttons on the third and final page, and now I'm ready to export this as an interactive PDF. To do that, simply go up to File, Export, and from the Format dropdown, ensure that you have Adobe PDF Interactive selected. I've already gone ahead and exported this, so I'll hit Cancel, you would hit Save, and I'll open it in Adobe Acrobat Pro. This would also work in Adobe Acrobat Reader, as well as Acrobat on the web. I can click on each answer and you can see that all my buttons are working properly. I'll click reset to reset the question back to its original appearance. And then of course I can choose the correct answer. I'll move on to page two. In this case, I can click on all four and they're all working properly. I'll click reset and choose the proper answer. I'll click next and choose the correct answer here. You can see that all the buttons are working properly. As a final step, let me show you how to use InDesign's Publish Online feature to quickly upload your quiz and share it online. To publish the document online and view it in a web browser, make your way up to File and choose Publish Online. And finally, you can click Publish to publish it on an Adobe hosted server. You can click View Document to open it in a desktop browser. However, I wanna show you what the experience will look like when you're viewing it on a mobile device. I've opened the project on my mobile device and you can see that I'm on page one. All my buttons are working properly. I can reset the answer and choose the proper answer. I'll move to the next page and I can choose all the answers to show you that the buttons are working. Reset and choose the proper answer and then move on to the last page. And you can see that all my buttons are working properly. Reset and choose the correct answer. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create an interactive quiz with Adobe InDesign. If you found this tutorial helpful, leave a like and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Want to learn more about interactive design with Adobe InDesign? Then check out the playlist above. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.